Welcome to The Dream Show. I'm Jane Theresa Anderson, and this is episode 283-283. And just before we start, a big thank you to those of you who have been embracing my first fiction, my book, Life Life, and buying it, and not only buying it, but beginning to post reviews or let me know what you think as you near the end of the book. It's been a lot of fun. I'm still in a few weeks of promoting the book and talking about it and all of that stuff, but really today we're getting back in this podcast to to dreams, which is what the dream show is really all about. Though I may say a little bit more about the book at the end of today's podcast. I thought I'd start with the situation when you wake up crying tears after a dream. And the reason I thought I'd do this is because I wrote a blog called When You Wake Up Crying in, oh, back in September 2011. And it was always very popular. I used to get a lot of comments on the on the actual blog itself. And then when I released my YouTube channel, which was, I don't know, several years ago, <laughs> one of the many things that I did was post an audio version of When You Wake Up Crying Real Tears. It's got, it's one of the most popular uh, YouTubes on my channel. Um, it's easy for you to find if you go there. And I get so many comments, um, you know, mostly along the lines of people saying the equivalent of, I, I, I'm so pleased that I found this, it's been so helpful, it's been, it's been life changing for me. So when I got another one this morning, I thought, yeah, I really should share this on my podcast with you on The Dream Show. So we're going to start there. Then we're going to move into um, another blog that I wrote recently that kind of fits with that title. And further down, I'm also going to tell you about a new service that I am offering, at least for a little while. And, well, let's start at the beginning. <laughs> when You Wake Up Crying, from my blog in September 2011 on janetheresa.com and also from my YouTube channel. Oh, I'm also supposed to give my websites before I start anything on a podcast. So, <laughs> janetheresa.com, that's Teresa without an H, is where you go to read all the blogs, hundreds of blogs that I've written on dreams and dreaming. It's where you can go to listen to every episode of the dream show that's ever been. Although, of course, you can always catch the most recent ones on all the usual podcast platforms, including Apple and Spotify. JaneTheresa.com is also where you can go to find out about my various services, all my books, my courses, and so on. And if you want to go direct to my course website, The Dream Academy, the address for that is dream-academy-online.com and or find me on Instagram. When you wake up crying. When you wake up crying real tears, or simply feeling profoundly sad for no apparent reason. It's because you have finally touched upon some buried grief through a dream. You may have released all the grief, or there may be more to come. Either way, when you wake up crying, it is good and healing. Don't you always feel much better after a cry? Even if you don't remember the dream, Rest assured that tears are better out than in. And although you may become more aware in the next few days of a past event that caused you grief, you are well on the way to finally letting it go and moving on. There will be times in your past where you were unable to express your grief or where you felt you should try to hide it. Perhaps boys don't cry or you were advised to keep a stiff upper lip, or you accepted a hurtful situation as normal or something to be endured. So you packed grief away out of sight. Or perhaps the only way to get through a situation was to pretend to yourself that it wasn't happening or wasn't important, or that you were coping wonderfully or needed to smile for others, or that you had already healed. These and other forms of denial are like band-aids. 
They work on the surface, but the deeper wound still hurts, affecting how you live your life. One day, the grief finally breaks through, perhaps accompanied by a dream of a dam bursting or a tsunami breaking, and you wake up crying. If you can remember your dream, look for clues about your grief, as understanding the past will help you to accelerate your healing. Look for a young child or a younger person who seems sad or hurt or trying to cover up his or her feelings. What age is the child? Ask what happened for you at that age or that number of years ago. It doesn't matter whether the child or person looks like you. He or she most likely symbolises the event or your hurt. Also look for historical markers in your dream, perhaps cars, houses, clothes or numbers that help to give you a time period in your life to explore. When you have found the source of your grief, do this dream alchemy practice. Close your eyes and visualise hugging and comforting yourself as you were back then, or hugging and comforting the child in the dream. Let her cry all her tears dry. Then let her smile and laugh and grow strong and happy. Tell her how wonderful her life will be now that her tears have washed it all away and see her growing before your eyes, changing and becoming a strong, happy, powerful and relieved new you. Merge with her in your mind's eye and take her fully healed into your heart. Now I thought I'd follow that with this uh, blog that I wrote for the Dream Academy in April this year, April 2024. As you probably know, I have two blog roles going, one on the Dream Academy and one on janeteresa.com. I must say, if you Google the Dream Academy, there are all sorts of other websites called the Dream Academy, which have nothing to do with dreams. So just a reminder that the Dream Academy, my one, is to do with dreams. The address for that is dream dash academy dash online.com. Anyway, this blog, Perspective, written in April this year, seems to be a good follow-on from the one that I've just read you. Perspective. In a long ago dream, I was a passenger in an open carriage train. Sunshiny blue skies, lightly kissing my skin as we journeyed peacefully alongside an ocean. The sense of the journey was liberation, an unblocking, a through way to the future. As I watched the ocean, I noticed churning dark waves, tsunamis that rose quite majestically before subsiding into silvery sparkles and luminescent pearls. How would you interpret such a dream? You might wonder if this dream reflected a distancing from dark emotions, an ability to stay calm in the face of turmoil. And you might wonder if this is a good thing or not such a good thing. Isn't it better to befriend dark emotions, to let them speak to you, to feel them roiling in your belly, to acknowledge them, to be open to what they can teach you, and to let them go? Generally, yes, it is. Or might such a dream reflect perspective? Was the dreamer, a long ago me, seeing the silvery sparkles and shooting stars of insight, the pearls of wisdom that can result from facing, acknowledging and travelling through difficult or seemingly insurmountable troubles? When worries, fears or troubling emotions begin to rear their heads, you might dream uneasy dreams. 
perhaps a sense of foreboding, a storm or tsunami on the horizon, or you might dream of being chased by dark shadowy figures, or running away, or hiding. If those stormy emotions, worries, fears, or challenging circumstances get closer, you might dream of being engulfed by darkness, trapped by evil forces, deluged by floods, frozen in the face of an advancing tsunami. The list of nightmarish dramas that reflect your feelings and beliefs is actually endless. Working with these dreams helps provide insight into your conditioned patterns of reacting or responding to such circumstances and offers the possibility of more effective ways of surviving and thriving through challenge. You might dream of facing the shadowy figure chasing you, or riding the wave, or surrendering to the majesty of a thunderstorm. Such a dream may remind you of how you have transcended difficulties in the past, or it may reflect fresh insight a magical moment where your dreaming brain has come up with a solution. A solution that equips you with the ability to navigate your way through the storm and emerge into calmer waters. Dreams capture the moment. My dream captured a moment of reverence for life's challenges, what they can teach us and how they can liberate us to move forward with our lives. It was a reverence born from perspective, from looking back on the past and seeing a particular challenge in a different light. How did I know this? One of the many keys to interpreting a dream is to note how the dreamer felt. In my dream, I didn't feel distanced, disengaged, uneasy, queasy or fearful. I felt calm, liberated by a profound awe for the way the ocean shaped and reshaped itself as time passed. I felt a sense of perspective. I also used the dream interpretation techniques that you can learn in my first course at the Dream Academy, which is called How to Interpret Your Dreams Step by Step. And you can use that to explore, and I used it, to explore other areas in my dream, each of which added context and understanding to my dream. If you want to do that course, you can begin it right now. Just go to dream-academy-online.com and it's the first course there called How to Interpret Your Dreams Step by Step. The moment you pay, you're in, and you can go from there. So... That's one way to be able to help yourself to understand your dreams. One way is listening to this podcast, nice and easy, lots of listening, lots of shows to listen to. Another one is to do that course or some of the other courses on my website. Another one, of course, is to read my books, because apart from my um, much-discussed <laughs> recent book, fiction book, I have also written eight books on dreams and dreaming, which you can find at janetheresa.com. You can find out about them at janetheresa.com. You can also, of course, book a personal dream consultation with me through Zoom or on the phone. My dream therapy books are currently full. You can contact me if you'd like to be on the waiting list for those. But I mentioned a new service, and it's this. I'm maybe just doing it for a few months. I'll see how it goes. I might do it for longer. And I've put it up there for those of you who, for various reasons, don't want to do a long um, one hour Zoom consultation with me, or maybe you live in a time zone where that doesn't really work well for you, considering that I live in Australia. Or maybe because this is a shorter service, you're looking for something in these more difficult financial times that is not quite as expensive for you as consulting me on a, on a Zoom consultation. So I've created one called Guiding Insights, and it's Guiding Insights, which I deliver by email. So you put your dream on the form on my website at janetheresa.com, and your dream 
And a couple of questions I ask you about your dream come direct to me. No one else sees them. And this is for when you want to cut straight to the point and receive my guiding insights by email. So what I do is I read your dream. I consider its unique personal meaning to you based on all my experiences of so many dream consultations over so many years. And then I email you my insights into how the dream relates to your life. So in emailing you insights, what I'm really doing is shining a light on what you need to know and helping you to see your best way forward. So you can find out about more about that and you can submit your dream at janetheresa.com. Just go to the menu, go to consultations and you'll see it there, guiding insights delivered by email. And I, before I say goodbye, because this is just a short podcast today, I did say that I wanted to have another little mention of my book, um, Ninth Life. I'm just trying to find the piece of paper. Here it is, I printed it out. I wanted to read. It's been so much fun, both writing that book and receiving people's reviews and, and thoughts about it. So I thought I would read out just two reviews that I've got before we say goodbye. And the first one is from Picasso Decker in the United States. And Picasso says, With a touch of mystery, humour and drama, Jane Theresa Anderson tells a captivating tale that keeps your attention from the first page to the last. Night for Life is funny, charming, heartfelt and surprisingly poignant. Anderson does a brilliant job of capturing a cat's psyche in the pages through the portrayal of the protagonist, Amantha, also known as Cat. Her actions and how she thinks and sees the world and judges human behaviour make you believe she is a real-life cat. The plot is very well paced and you don't know what to expect at any point in the story. I loved the different personalities of the human characters especially Abby, Millie, Clary, and even Serenity and Freya. Kat's friendship with Pearl was another highlight for me. If you like cats and mystery adventure tales, you'll love this book. And the second one I'm going to read you is from Barbara Cortile in Australia. And Barbara says, In this captivating book, the author takes us behind the scenes of running a wellness centre, blending the politics of ethics and business with delightful storytelling. The dilemmas faced by the characters are thought-provoking and resonate deeply, showcasing the complexities of maintaining integrity while striving for success. One of the standout elements of the story is Cat, a brilliantly crafted animal character who imparts wisdom and offers a unique perspective on the unfolding drama. Through Cat's eyes, we get a fly on the wall look at the diverse cast of characters, adding an extra layer of depth and charm to the narrative. The author skillfully intertwines a subplot of intrigue and mystery, keeping readers engaged until the very end when all is revealed. This quirky tale is not only full of wisdom, but also sharp observations of human nature, making it a truly enjoyable and insightful read. That's all I'm going to say about Night Life, except if you want to buy it, it's on Amazon. If you have difficulty finding the links, go to my website, janetreza.com, go to books on the menu, and I've got the various Amazon links for whichever country you live in, so you can go straight there and buy your copy if you haven't already read it. And you may have read it and not sent in a review or not posted a review to Amazon or whatever. Every review helps, every post of stars helps, and I just love to receive your thoughts on the book, whatever they are. And finally, just before we say goodbye, remembering that uh, the dream show is a mix. Some episodes are like this, where I'm talking about dreams and related topics, and others are episodes where we have a guest on the show, a guest who comes on anonymously, brings their dream for us to explore and interpret in depth. And if you'd like to be a guest on the dream show, 
It's so easy to put your name down. Again, just go to my website at janetheresa.com, go to the menu, go to podcasts, and on the drop-down box you'll see Be a Guest on the Dream Show. Please put your hand up. Come and join me as a guest on the show. I look forward to talking with you then and exploring the dream, seeing what it means, how it can help you, and how it can help all of our listeners who are listening to us every month on The Dream Show. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of The Dream Show. Have a wonderful month. I'm Jane Teresa Anderson. Bye.